Hello again, and welcome back to the platformer series. Been a while since we've been in this one, but we still got some more stuff to do in it, so... And I'm trying to stick to my schedule I set up, so... What we'll set up in this one is, last time we set up the AI to where when she gets hit, it actually, it'll make her blink and throw her back. But, uh, there's no real, you know, negative effect. Like, you can just do that forever, it does nothing. So let's set up a little health bar system, make it apply damage, and we're going to do kind of like a Zelda style one. So with the three heart, instead of doing a progress bar. So if you don't have any hearts that you want, oops that you want to use uh, there's this website called opengameart.org and straight from the title screen I just typed in heart these are all free to use it's just open to use found this one right here and when you download it you'll get that's the wrong button you'll get this file I opened it up in photos and then I just edited it twice like this so let me show you real quick so you're going to need two pictures, one that's an empty heart, one that's a filled heart. So you just crop it down to about like that, and then you'll want to save a copy. And then you'll do it again for the other one, just like that. So you'll name one heart uh, empty and one heart fit. That's the wrong one. One heart filled. I haven't imported them yet, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. So you just import them just like that, they'll come in, and then let's set up our HUD to reflect that. So you can even get some, probably some diamond icons for that if you wanted to. But I'm just going to drag out the image from our common panel, because that's what these are going to be. Set them to 100 by 100. And then we want three of these. These are going to represent the empty hearts. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up real quick. So just in the appearance panel, I'll just look for that empty panel. Or empty. And that looks pretty good. So I'll just go ahead and adjust its position. You can set it where you want it. I'm just going to... Let's see, I'll do 50 and 50. All right, and then I'm just going to duplicate that and set it 100 by 50. No, no, no. Let's see. 150 by 50. That's still too close. That's too far. Right in the middle looks good. So going from 50 to 175. So I'm increasing it on the X by 125 uh, units. Duplicate it one more time. So 350. So that looks nice. Now these are going to be the empty ones, so now we need filled ones. So I'm going to duplicate, and I'm just going to set it to the same position as the first one. And then I'm going to change it to the filled icon. So it'll just completely overlap just like that. Might need to just kind of adjust it just a little bit so it fits just right. So this is where you can kind of fix any, like if you offset on the crop, like I apparently did, <laughs> you can just fix it up in here. So I'm going to duplicate that, and then what well, was 175 by 50. The Z order represents uh, its position in the graph, so if these are at zero, they'll be, it's like if you're setting things on a table, you set the Z order zero down first and then you set the thing on top of it would be Z order one and it kind of stacks like that so you want to make sure that these hearts the filled hearts are Z order one so that they sit in front of these ones so I'm going to duplicate one more time and that was 300 by 50 and then that will represent our health bar but now in order to get this to work so in our player in our event graph we want to set up a health integer so in the variables, we're going to add a variable called, I'm going to just call it HP, and then you want to make it an integer. Now it is going to be defaulted to 3. Uh, just to double check our little AI enemy guy, I'm going to 
double check. I'm pretty sure he's set up to apply one damage, but you want to go in there and just make sure. Where is the overlap that makes him do damage? Oh, applied it. Yeah, right there. Okay. So on begin overlap. Yep. All right. He's doing one damage. So that'll work perfect. So it's going to be defaulted to three for our health. So back in the HUD widget. Now we need to set these up to where they reflect our current health. So I'm going to highlight the first one. And for its visibility, we want to set a binding. So we're going to create a binding. I'm going to drag this back and I'm going to add a branch real quick with a B left click. I'm going to hook the true to the visible and what we want to check, we're going to drag out the player reference and we want to get out that HP variable. And for the first health point, we want to find out if it's greater than or equal to one. If true, visible, if not, hidden. So we'll compile that real quick and then we want to move this out of the way but we want to box select everything and hit control C to copy it because we're going to go back to the designer, select the next one and then repeat the process with a minor change. So I'm going to get rid of that, control V to paste everything and then I want to find out if my health is greater than or equal to 2. So compile that and then we're going to do this one more time for that last one. So for the visibility, we'll bind it one more time, get rid of that return node so we can replace it with control V. And then we want to find out if our health is greater than or equal to three. So now when I start the game, let me move my character out of the way so she don't get hit immediately. Now you see we have our little health bar up in the corner. And then if I run into the enemy, It ain't do nothing because I ain't set up the actual function to. Uh, all right. So in our player blueprint, after she takes damage and gets knocked back, we want to set that HP a little bit lower. So we'll grab out the HP and we're just going to decrement it. Decrement int, rather. So I'll compile that real quick. Now let's check it. Now it should be working. Yeah, so now she takes her health away when she gets hit. What we can do to take this a step further is so that... Um, well, we also got to set up a kill function for her. But what we can do is, uh, if she's been hit already, like if she's blinking currently, give her kind of an invulnerability so that... Um, if she gets hit multiple times during that, it's kind of a little saving grace type thing, you know? So right on here at the event any damage, let's add a branch real quick. And I'm going to hook the false to the launch because what we want to check is to see if she's been struck. So I'm going to add a new variable called struck question mark and that's going to be a boolean. And I'll drag this up, get it, and we're going to hook it to that condition variable. So at the very end after we take the HP away, I'm going to set that she has been struck. So the way we can take this away is at the very end, um, or uh, on our blink function where she's kind of glowing, after that finishes and it sets her material back to the normal function, normal whatever, we'll just set that struck back to false. And that'll let her take damage again, but not while she's blinking red. So now when we get hit, I'm not going to be quick enough to get back to him, but if there was multiple around, she wouldn't be. Here, let me, let me just to show you real quick, let's see. I'll just bump this up to five so that it runs through this really slow. So now if I bump back into him, it does nothing. So she's pretty invincible during that little countdown phase. So if there's multiple enemies and you miss and it launches you into one, it's not going to just bounce you from enemy to enemy, killing your character that quick. So I'm going to set that back down to point two real quick. 
Now what we want to do, one more thing we want to do is off of the HP, where we're decreasing it, where we get hit, we want to find out if it's less than or equal to zero. And we'll hook a branch right here at the very end. And if it's true, then we just want to open level by name. So the level, we're going to, let's just promote this to a variable. We'll call it current level. And I'm going to set its default. We're in the third person example map, so I'm going to default it to that. When we get to the, where we add in the world hub to where you can select different levels, third person example map, then you'll update this as the, ga as the level loads in. That way it always loads the correct level. But let's take a look real quick. So, boom, boom, boom. Oh, okay, yep, it loaded. You can either set this up to load like that, or if you wanted to set this up to where it just knocks her back to the last checkpoint she crossed, you can do, instead of this, you would just call your teleport function, or whatever, what, what do we call that? Yeah, respawn. So we would call the respawn function, and then we want to set the health back to whatever your full health amount is. So I'm going to drop in a torch real quick, just so we can see that real quick. So I'll activate that checkpoint real quick. And then get hit one, two, three. And then she's fully, mm, but that, let's see. Instead of it blinking on the third time, let's readjust this a little bit. So, I'm going to detach this real quick and move it down. I'm going to move the blink function a little bit further. I'm going to detach all these. I'm going to set these onto the false. So basically it'll check to see if our health is less than or equal to zero. And if it's not, then it'll do our blink and tell it to be struck. But if it is, then it just respawns her and resets her health. So we'll just set that up like that. So let's try that out real quick. That way she's not launched. Oh, she probably will still be launched, huh? So let's try. All right, one more thing we need to do to fix that. Is we'll also take this launch over. So if she's not been struck, I'm going to hook that to the reduce HP. Just drag all of this way over. Just kind of readjust. Because the way code, or the way the blueprints are read by the engine, it just reads left to right. So it'll do everything as it comes to it. So wherever things are falling in that line, that's what will be done first. So you want to adjust it to where the certain checks are done first. Just like, just like that. So now we'll compile and take a look one more time real quick. So now when I hit it, she'll just respawn full health back at the checkpoint. So you can do it either way. Set it to where it reloads the level or respawns her at the point. But, yeah. So, alright, in the next one we'll start, oh. Wait, that's right. One more thing I wanted to adjust real quick is if you take a look at this bounce pad. She seems to not touch it at all. Like, she's just bouncing way above it. So let's fix that real quick because it's a pretty simple fix. So inside the launch pad, when we're cast on the begin overlap sphere, when it casts to the player, we want to find out if it's overlapping that enemy hit. So, 
off why is it there it goes off the other component for the begin overlap let's drag out an equal sign you want to make sure it's the component because the enemy hit sphere is a component of the player blueprint so we'll hook that enemy hit right there and we'll add one branch in here drag this back you can detach cords and uh, adjust things like that by holding control and clicking and dragging so I'm just gonna hook that condition variable right there and it looks I know it's kinda a little bit messy sometimes when you're building and then reiterating stuff it gets a little bit messy but you can just kinda drag stuff around and readjust but now when she interacts with it it's a little bit well, a little bit better but now you can just kinda play around with that that sphere blueprint put it where you want it so if I have it right at her feet it looks a little bit better and then just to make sure yeah we can still kill our enemy so yeah so in the next one we'll start building the level now that we got all the the kill function and all that jazz done so look forward to seeing you there Bye-bye.